<laughs> Hello there, welcome back to Wonderland Asylum. We're back today with issue 40 of the Hachette Partworks release of Titanic, the ship, the legend. So, what's in today's magazine? Well, the first article is Safety, Speed and Luxury, again talking about the Cunard line and their sort of services to, to shipping, reliable and robust. A nice artist's impression there of the two British steamships picking their way through an ice field. Um, and then again, part three of Titanic the Blockbuster. Uh, again, talking about the, the Grand Staircase, etc. And of course, films that were shot, um, scenes that were shot on the flooded set. Very interesting. And that takes us on to the instructions. So, let's see what's in the box. Okay, so in today's box, we have some brackets. We have some drive shafts, I do believe, two different lengths. We have an anchor chain, which I can toss to the side because I already have used one. We have some AP screws, again. And we have the least controversial item ever associated with Titanic. <coughs> we have the three propellers. Now, I'm not sure what one's port and what one's starboard, but it tells you in the magazine. And then we have the central propeller. Now Hachette have opted to go with James Cameron's movie adaptation and go with certainly the original design, which was a four-bladed central propeller. Now you'll find people who will argue with you till the cows come home about whether that's correct or whether there were three blades in the central propeller. Me, personally, I'm going to leave it as four because I quite like how these propellers look. They're a lot nicer than the ones that came with Bismarck. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it as four, but I will talk more about that at the end. So the first thing it wants us to do is to take the central propeller and fit it on to the longest shaft. Now, do not glue these on at present. And there we go, that looks quite nice. So we'll turn like that. But don't glue these on because I have a feeling that what will happen is we'll have to take the completed engine room assembly and slot the shafts through holes in the finished hull. Now, if you glue these on, they ain't going to fit through the holes. So, yeah, don't glue them. <laughs> no matter what you do, do not glue them. Again, we're just fitting the other two ones on. They do not fit very snugly at all, so they will need to be glued at the end, but not yet. And that one's pretty tight, but the other ones are not. So again, yeah, nice propellers. I may not leave them fitted when it comes to actually messing about with them later, but yeah, they do look quite nice. So the port propeller is this one here. You can see the way the blades are angled. That is the port side. Then you have the central propeller, which the blades are angled in the opposite direction from the port one. And then you have the starboard propeller and the blades on the starboard are oriented the exact same way as the blades on the central propeller. That's the best way to tell them apart is that the port propeller should be opposite from the other two. The blades should be facing the opposite way. Okay, so the next thing it wants us to do, if I move these briefly, is bring over the assembly that we've been working on previously, and it appears as if by magic. So, if we fit the central one first, now again, it will only go in one way because it's a D-shaped fitting on the end. So all you need to do is look at the fitting, look at the way the gearbox is sitting, and slide the shaft through. Now, I did wonder about the wisdom of screwing that in, but nope, that's engaged quite nicely. And then the port propeller. Again, 
the D-shaped hole, you're just going to have to move your shaft about until it lines up properly, and then guide it in, because you won't be able to turn it now, because the, the motor is engaged. And if you're having trouble getting one side to fit in, what you can try and do is turn it the other way and see if the other side fits better. They should be the same. But yeah, that, that's what I found there was one side fitted a lot more easily than the other. It doesn't tell you that they're different in any way, shape or form, but apparently they are. And what I am going to do is get the box that this all came in and I'm going to set it under the engine room assembly just purely so the propellers aren't touching my cutting mat. Okay, so again I'll refit this port propeller. Or maybe I won't. It's not liking that at all. I may have to sand that out a wee bit. And then the starboard one, exactly the same. Line up the D-shaped hole and it slots in quite nicely. So it was only the port one I had the slightest bit of difficulty with. Now if I slide that over, you can see the propellers, two of them, are sitting there. I think it's just been there's a, a slight... The D shape isn't just big enough on this side. Now if I can slide that out of the gearbox, I'm going to try and push that propeller back on. Now that... That shape on the end there hasn't been cut properly, it hasn't been machined very well, so I'm going to have to cut that down a little bit. Now I do have this, so we'll see if that will do it. I don't think it will. Now again, if I do this on the side that the propeller goes on to, it should be easier than trying to do it on the, the side that fits into the gearbox. Again. Again, it does happen occasionally when you're building models, as things aren't properly cut or machined, so, yeah, it's just not been very well done at all, unfortunately. So, hang on. There we go. That's it on now, but that propeller is going to take a little bit of effort to get it back off, I might add. Which is always nice. Um, <laughs> so I don't need to glue that one. I will never need to glue that one. And that slides back in to the gearbox like that. And there we have all three propellers sitting very, very nicely. And now we get our brackets. So I'm going to keep the model sitting where it is and I'll get over the brackets and of course the massive pile of AP screws. Now I'll show you where the brackets are going to go but I'm not going to make you sit and watch me screw them all in because I think that would just be a bit silly. So this bracket, looking just like that, will sit on here. It's not going to sit just now, but that's where it'll go. This bracket, looking like that, will sit here. And these two brackets will go, doesn't matter which one goes on which side, will go on just like that. Again, because the propellers are on there, now I know they're, they're only on there to show you how it's going to look, but it feels a little bit unnecessary to have them on while I'm going to be putting pressure and screwing, but I suppose you could take them off if you particularly wanted to. Well, I can't take that one off because it's so tight, it's just not going to want to come off until I absolutely have to, so I will just leave it attached. Again... An AP screw, this one's going to be the most difficult to get in because the fit 
doesn't hold it on all that well. So it goes on just like that. And again, it doesn't need to be very tight, just until it starts to feel tight enough. Let me put this second screw in, because this is the most difficult one to get in. Because not only is the angle very awkward, but it's right at the tip, where I've got next to no pressure underneath. So I'm having to hold the underside, as you can see there. So I'll get these ones screwed in, and I'll be back in just a moment. So that's all those brackets perfectly fitted. And for me, that's all there is to do in this issue. Now, as I say, they did give the second propeller blade, but I already had a spare issue 24, so I used the one that was on there. Now, again, I am going to lift my tripod slightly in the hope you'll be able to see everything. And I'll turn the engine on again. So... If we put it in the two forward gear, you can see all the propellers turning. I'll move it forward slightly. And then when you put it into reverse, only the outer two turn, which is absolutely ideal. That's exactly what you want. Then again, I'll put it back into forward. You can see all three propellers turning. Absolutely magnificent. <laughs> chuffed to bits. Absolutely chuffed to bits. I've just noticed that the central propeller isn't properly engaged. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. Delighted with that. So, that's all for issue 40. What's coming in issue 41? Well, we're done with the engines. Um, it is the forward section of the boat deck and a bit of bridge decking and some LEDs. It doesn't look like there's too much to do in that one. But yeah, that's all for this issue and that's all for this pack. So I don't know when the next ones will be through because Hachette are using the old excuse of Oh, Royal Mail Strikes! Uh, garbage. They're just terrible at sending stuff out. They're always so, so slow. You can never guarantee when you're going to get anything. But you know that going in. You know what you're getting going into it. The only reason I agreed to do this is because it's Titanic and I really love Titanic. Um, but yeah, so I will lift the engine and let you see. That is the completed, I think, engine room going all the way back to the propellers. And if I turn it on, you can see the engines rotating all the way back and see the propellers turning at the stern. <laughs> How cool is that? Now again, for a section of the model I actually considered not bothering about. I just thought about leaving the engines out. If I hadn't been doing the diary for YouTube, I probably would have just left the engines out of the model and not bothered with them. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I might have to make a, an excuse to occasionally take the side panel off and showcase the engines because they, they are just awesome. I really, really am happy with them. Um, but yeah, that's all for this issue. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you're seeing, uh, leave a like, even leave me a comment uh, and subscribe to the channel to be notified of future content. But... That's all for now, so thank you very much, and as always guys, peace out.